Hi everyone, I'm Jeff, and thank you for joining us here at Oak Ridge Student Ministries. Today we are going to continue week three of our Do Something series. And today we're going to learn that God cares about injustice too. Sometimes we see things in the world around us that make us pause and wonder why things are the way they are. We wonder why those things happen or who decided that they should be that way. There is so much happening in the world around us that can cause us to ask big, big questions, especially when the things we see don't seem right. That's why we're in the middle of a series called Do Something. In it, we're talking about how we can see and respond to that kind of stuff. What can we do about the injustice that's happening all around us. And let me remind you, injustice is anything in our world that's unfair, unequal, or just not right. And it's something I think we can all agree we want to do something about, right? But while the feeling of wanting to help is a really good thing, I think it's important to remember that seeing injustice may make you feel something that you aren't exactly sure what to do about. Maybe you know what I mean. Maybe you've seen pictures of animals kept in cages being treated really poorly and wondered who would do something like that. Or you've seen videos on the internet of people being hurt or mistreated because of the color of their skin. And you asked why? Why would someone treat another person like that? Or maybe you've heard someone make fun of another person because of the neighborhood they live in, and you've stopped to think, they can't help where they lived, so why is it okay to make fun of them? No matter what the injustice is, I think the more we begin to see it happen around us, the more opportunity we have to ask questions about what we're seeing. If I'm honest with you, when it comes to injustice, my question always seems to come back to one huge question, the hardest question for me to understand or to find an answer to. And that is, if God is so great and so loving and so powerful, why isn't he doing something about this? Why isn't he doing something about all the wrong we see in the world around us? Can you relate to that? Maybe you feel nervous that I even said that out loud. I mean, we're in church. We're not supposed to question God here, right? After all, he's God. Even if we don't understand what he's doing, we just have to accept it, right? Or maybe you're like, yeah, that's what I keep asking. You've never said it out loud, but you've wondered the same thing in your mind over and over and over again. How can things like racism and poverty and animal abuse and hunger and crime and discrimination exist in a world that God has power over? If he can do anything he wants, why wouldn't he just do something about all the wrong that I see in the world around us? Or maybe you're new to all this faith stuff, so you're not really sure what you think about this question, but you do know that there are injustices happening all around the world, in your community, at your school, or even in your own life or to your family. If that's you, I'm really sorry you've had to experience this. It matters a lot, and we're going to keep talking about it. But today, I'd say that for some of you, it may be the reason that you aren't sure about God. After all, he seems silent, or like he isn't there as these injustices are happening all around the world or in your own lives. No matter how this question makes you feel, here's one thing I want you to be sure of. It's okay to ask questions. It's okay to ask these big questions. God can handle your questions. He's big enough. He isn't afraid of them. And honestly, I think he wants us to ask them because asking questions is part of what helps us discover more about who God really is. It's what helps us get to the truth. And I want to encourage you that I agree. I agree that questions are good. If you're having big questions about your faith, ask those questions. And trust me, 
we're not the only ones asking big questions about God and about injustice. Believers, thinkers, writers, experts, and scholars have been trying to answer these questions for a long, long time. And the truth is, they are just, there are just no easy answers to any of this. Because once we've seen injustice, we know somebody needs to do something. But why does it seem like God is doing nothing? Maybe you've assumed God doesn't care. Maybe you've assumed certain people just have things easier than others. And maybe you think that's because somehow God let it happen that way. Maybe some people just have a harder time in life. And God says, oh, well, good luck out there. Not much I can do about it. He washes his hands of it. Thankfully, we don't have to guess or assume where God stands on all of this. We don't have to wonder how he feels about injustice. We don't have to guess at what God is really like. We can look at his son, Jesus, who is the best way to see what God is really like. Several people who knew Jesus personally and hung out with him took the time to write down what they saw and heard so that people like you and me, the ones who didn't get to see it with our own eyes, would know what happened. Today, we're going to take a look at the eyewitness account of Matthew, a book written by one of Jesus' closest followers. Sometimes, in church, we call this the book of Matthew or the gospel of Matthew. But no matter what you call it, Matthew hung out with Jesus and he knew what he was about. Maybe that's why he took the time to write down the things he saw. In this story, here's what he said. And if you want to read with me, we're reading from Matthew chapter 9, verses, verse 35. Jesus traveled throughout all the towns and villages of that area teaching in the synagogues, and announcing the good news about the kingdom. And he healed every kind of disease and illness. So during Jesus' ministry on earth, he spent a lot of time traveling around to tell people about God. And in doing that, Jesus talked about a lot of different things that God cares about. Things like people being rescued from ca captivity, the hungry being fed, the poor being served, the children being cared for. In other words, Jesus was talking about justice, but Jesus didn't stop there. He also did a lot of different things to help those who were in need around him. He healed and helped people who were sick and suffering all the time. It's almost like everywhere he went back then, Jesus had something to say and do about injustice. The scripture continues in Matthew 9:36. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were confused and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. This is so important. Jesus didn't just see the people around him and move on. He did things to help them. But he didn't just act to help them because he had to. He helped them because he cared. He had compassion for the people around him. And that compassion motivated him to act, to help to do something. And that's what he wants us to do too. He wants us to respond and to act not just because we're supposed to, but because we care. You see, Jesus showed us what God is like when it comes to injustice. He gave us a model to follow. First, Jesus saw the injustice. What's cool is that he didn't just see it. He looked for it wherever he went and he helped others see it too. And when he saw injustice, Jesus cared. So if you've ever wondered, God is pro-justice. In fact, hundreds of years earlier, he said so through the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 61 verse 8. For I, the Lord, love justice. So we know that God loves justice. We know that he sees it and we know that he cares. But that still doesn't totally answer our question, does it? I mean, if he cares so much, why isn't he stopping it? Why doesn't God just do that whole miracle thing he was so good at and fix it all? Why doesn't he just do something? Well, 
I think our answer is actually in the last part of the verse we just read in Matthew. Look at what Jesus said one more time from Matthew 9, 36 and 37. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And he said to his disciples, the harvest is great. The workers are few. So, Maybe you don't talk about the harvest a lot in your day-to-day lives, but back then, it made a lot of sense. Jesus lived in a community that depended on farming for food. So when he talked about planting and harvesting, he was using that as a way to talk about the work that needed to be done. When he said that the harvest is great, he meant that the work to be done to make the world like God intended it is big. There's a lot of it to do. And the people to do that work, well, there are a few of them. Because the work isn't easy, and it isn't always fun, and it isn't over and done quickly, the work to help those who are hurting and struggling and facing injustice is really big. But here, Jesus reminds us that there's a plan to see that work get done. And it's in the workers the people like you and me. Do you remember the dominoes from a couple weeks ago? We said that before an action can happen, we have to see the injustice around us. And now we've learned that God is doing something about injustice by using each one of us. Each one of these things might not necessarily be an injustice, but when each one of us work together, we can make a huge difference. Together, we have so much power to be part of the action, to make a difference. I want you to think about this. What if we are the plan? What if we're actually the answer to all the questions we have about what God is doing in the face of injustice? What if it was you and me working on behalf of Jesus to take care of the things that he cares about? When it comes to what God is doing about injustice, I think that the answer is us. God is opening our eyes to see it. He is giving us the compassion to care about it. And he's calling us to act in response to it. He's working through us to see wrongs being made right in the world. I don't know about you, but I think that's pretty cool. In other words, God is doing something about injustice. What's he doing? He's opening our eyes to see it. He's changing our hearts to care about it. And he's using us, his followers, to do something about it. The good news is, God is still doing something about injustice even thousands of years after the events we read about in the Bible. Movements that have helped animals' rights, women's rights, and voting rights are just a few of the results of God's followers all around the world opening up their hearts to injustice and choosing to help others. So, where do we start? If we want to be part of the solution, to the injustice in the world around us? Where do we begin? How do we change the way we see what God is doing so that we can do something with Him? I think we can do two main things. First, we can start by asking God to help us change our minds. Maybe you need God to help you change your mind about who He is. For so long you've thought that He doesn't care about injustice. You believed that he was silent or only blesses certain people while others suffer. For you, a great first step would be to ask God to help you change the way you see him. Ask him to show you that he not only sees injustice, but cares a lot about it and the people who are hurt by it too. Ask him to show you where he is working when it comes to the injustice that you care about? And then, how can you be a part of it? And then secondly, I think we need to start asking different questions. Instead of, 
Where is God? We can ask things like, what does God think about this person or this situation? What are God's people doing right now to fix this? Who do I listen to in order to learn more about this injustice? What is God calling me to do to help? And how can God use me? You see, God is doing something about injustice. And questions like these will help us join in that work with Him. It will help us to be part of the answer. So let me close by asking you this. What injustice in the world do you care about? Which one moves you to want to act? What do you see in the world around you that makes you want to do something to make it right? I'm going to leave you guys with those questions today. I want you to think about them. I want, to t- I want you to talk about them and see where you can be used by God, where God can use you to make a difference in the world around you. Let's close in prayer. God, thank you for giving us the chance to be together, to listen together, and to know that you are doing something to change the injustices we see. God, help us to run to catch up to what you're doing and become part of the change and the solution to the problems that are around us. We thank you for being with us and pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, thanks guys. We will see you again back here in the youth room next week.